On to other news, the Eastern Cape's Dale College Boys High School is in mourning after the death of two more pupils. In the most recent tragedy, 18-year-old first team rugby lock Liabona Deise was killed, well died in fact, after a rugby match last Saturday. That's after he collided with another player during the match. Now, we're told the teenager was fine in the moments immediately after, but had to be rushed to the emergency room later. Now, before he died, Lisa Kanya, Luana's body, he's 70, he was 17 years old. His body was discovered along a roadside in the Eastern Cape on the 3rd of this month, shortly, well, shortly before Tace's death. Dr. Garth Shaw is Dale College principal, and he joins us now. Doctor, after, well, good morning. Welcome to the program. Four pupils, I understand, lost to your school in just the last five months. How do you even begin as a school community to process such loss one after the other? Yeah, good morning, um, and thank you for, for having me on the show. And I'm sorry I can't patch in with the Zoom call. Um, yeah, it's just devastating. I mean, it's just, it's just we've just been hit by, you know, this one tragedy after the next. Um, you know, and all completely unrelated. You know, car accidents, um, Christmas Eve, and then a learner picking up a food poisoning um, at home and dying within 48 hours. It's just been devastating. And then these two, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, the school school communities in in, in mourning, obviously, and just a, a real fear around the school of, you know, why, why what's what's next? And, and we understand that they're coming out of COVID. I think it's, it's, it's really been an emotional time and, and a huge time of loss. And it's just the mm. situation of this is just challenging for us as a school. We're doing our, doing our best to, to, to support the learners through it, but, um, but it, you know, it's difficult. It's incredibly challenging. And Leah Bonner is passing the most recent a loss for the schooling community. He had been taking part in a rugby match, collided with another player, hurt a sensitive part of his head, appeared to be okay, then taken to hospital where he sadly succumbed to his injury. It's now brought back into question the issue of school sport safety. Are you yeah. satisfied that at Dale enough is being done to make sure that that is always adhered to at all times to avoid a repeat of such an incident? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, um, not not quite a collision. I, I think it's a little bit um, unclear on, on how it happened over there. It was a really freak accident. It, it, it looks like it was a whiplash, um, as opposed to a, a heavy collision um, that that you know a concussed collision, kind of a heavy hit tackle. Um, he he basically hit the ground going forward, um, obviously in a very unsupported way, um, and, and and resulted in a whiplash. I do. I think it has been asked whether he had, a, you know, um, underlying condition that that contributes to this, but we, we don't necessarily know that. Um, is enough being done? I mean, I think I think rugby, you know, is a rough sport. We know that, but but we know that there's a lot of research, a lot of work that goes into its safety, and you know, the box part program have been have been very much on it. Have been asking, you know, we want to learn from this so that we can make the game safer. Um, and I do appreciate that. You know, I think I think the the, the first aid care on the side of the field, the, the treatment even that Leobola got at hospital um, was good. Um, it has raised questions for me. You know, you arrive at the first aid station on the side of the field and, and you get asked the question, does he have medical aid or not? And it's a horrible question. It's a horrible answer. You know, is he going to a first world private hospital or is he going to a state hospital on a Saturday afternoon? Um, so possibly, you know, we should be looking at that and asking questions around that. You know, are all of our players, you know, are you know people playing rugby at this level? You know, and first team rugby is, is a very intense level these days. You know, um, do they have the protection? Could there be medical insurance um, more widely available to players who come from poor homes who don't necessarily have that? Um, these are the questions that, that yeah. we certainly need to be looking at ourselves. And I, and I would encourage Saru to be looking at as well for players playing at that high level. But is the match last Saturday itself being investigated as far as adherence to safety protocols? Yes, absolutely. No, I mean, there's, there's very strict protocols in place. Um, um, the match itself, you know, in terms of the, the preparations that were in place, in terms of how to officiate it, absolutely no problems with that. Um, and, and I said as much at, at the memorial on Thursday, you know, we had... We had the, the host school there, and I had the ref, we had the referee there, and I specifically spoke to them, and I've spoken free from any condemnation that they may feel of this. You know, this was a freak accident, it really was. And if you see the video footage of how it happened, there's absolutely no blame to lay on anybody here. Um, in terms of um, 
on the side, you know, could ambulances got into the hospital quicker? I think there's a few things that we can learn about that. In terms of the first aid on the side of the field, I mean, he was administered with oxygen immediately um, when they saw that he was battling to breathe. I mean, that's, that's an excellent, mm-hmm. excellent standard, um, way above what expectations are. So, But how comfortable yeah. then are the rest of the pupils participating in sport, and especially yeah. parents who sometimes would send their kids off to boarding school or unable to be at every sport event and would be concerned about how safe their children are participating? No, it's a good, it's a good question to be asking, you know, and I received an email from a parent who lost, who lost his son 26 years ago at a, at a, at a school, in, um, at a boys' school in, in, in KZN. Um, you know, so these, these incidents do happen. They're incredibly rare and incredibly isolated. You know, um, you know people always draw comparisons of shark attacks and how, how rare a shark attack is compared to a car accident. So, I mean, you, you, you're valid asking these questions. Um, rugby is played and supported by millions. It's a huge part of our culture in South Africa. Um, these incidents are incredibly rare. They're incredibly traumatic when they happen. Um, I think, you know, Leah Bonner's mother herself has been an absolute example to me in this. She understood how much her son loved this game and how committed he was to it. And, and she realized that this was a freak accident and, and, and a horrible accident. But um, de- devastating um, probes us to ask these kind of questions that you're asking. Absolutely. And we should do that to make the game safer. Um, does it warrant pulling all players off the field? Uh, you know, our team have traveled up to Cairns now to participate in the tournament up here. And, and, and that decision came from them. As a school, we wanted to withdraw from the tournament. And they just said, sir, our therapy is with each other. Our therapy is on the field. The Avona, you know, he went off the field. He got patched up for blood and he wanted to go on again. You know, his last words were, I'm ready. Can I go play? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. these are children who are now going to play this weekend again, you say, participating in a game of rugby. They've lost a fellow player, a classmate, a friend. Before that, the school also got news of the body that was found. That was the body of Lisa Kanya Luana, 17 years old as well. Now, reports this week are that some schoolboys, schoolgirls, have had to be questioned by police as to what happened because there was a party that I understand he'd attended in Bishaw. Something may have happened there, reports of a fight that may have happened, then he then left in a vehicle. There are questions around whether he left at 8, 8 p.m. or 2 a.m. because there have been contradicting statements around his time of departure and ultimately when his body was discovered on the side of the highway. Is there a behavioral issue? I know teenagers behave, misbehave generally, but is there a concerning behavioral issue at Dale at the moment? Wow, well, um, that's not a question that I expected. Um, I don't think so to that, to that degree. Um, I mean, certainly society that, we, that we're living in today is, is fraught with all sorts of unfortunate things, and, um, and we've certainly addressed that in our school community. Um, I think uh, I've encouraged the school community to not be involved in rumours, um, and I think you've picked up on some of those rumours. I've, I've said very strongly to the school community that um, you know official reports and post mortems will come out, and, and we should let those happen. You know, let those take place. Um, yeah, there are very clear details on, on what transpired that Saturday evening, um, and it is, it is very unfortunate, and there's, there's a lot of, of hurt and emotion. Uh, that's locked up in there, but I don't think that this is the appropriate place to be talking about that. Mm. And what help then is available for the broad? I know you said the school community should stay out of rumors and speculation, but for the children who still have to get up every morning and report for class, what's being done to assist them? Because it's yeah. really shocking to, in your teenage years, be dealing with this level of grief and so frequently. Yeah. Yeah, so we've, um, we've, we've tried our best to manage the situation and, um, you know, the, the, the community have rallied around us in an incredible way. And I want to thank the school community, the, you know, the, the King Williamstown school community, but also, you know, the school community around the country has just been phenomenal in their support of us. And, you know, um, the headmaster recently said to me, class, this is, this is unfortunately something that we do need to deal with often, you know. Um, and, and, and please do call if you, if, you, if you would like, you know, support or advice or, or whatever, you know. So I think that's, that's something to, to bear in mind. Um, um, in terms of the, the King of the Dale College community, you know, we've, uh, we've reduced our programs. We've tried to create uh, opportunities for support. Um, we've got a full-time school counsellor employed at the school who's, who's worked overboard and has, um, has brought on a team of counsellors to assist, and, and she's methodically moved through different classes to provide support and, and debriefing and counselling 
um, and that council will be available on a long-term basis going forward. And, and thank you to everybody who's come on board, you know, from, from people within the private sector in the counselling fraternity, um, uh, religious institutions who've gotten involved, and obviously the department, Department of Education counsellors who've come on board um, and come and visit the school and connected with learners, connected with the players, um, connected with staff. So, so there's, there's been a lot of that support, um, and we'll obviously manage on the ground going forward. Um, managed to do, you know, very special memorial services for both learners this week, um, involve the families, um, uh, be able to to recognize the trauma within the school and the emotional um, you know, condition within the school, and, and, and hopefully, you know, Tuesday we can find a new normal again, but, uh, but obviously within that be very... Dr. Garth Shaw, thank you so much for your time, and we hope that the next few months will be a happier time at your school. Thank you. Well, after this, we're going to take you back.